Remember when Donald Trump got beat up in the news for daring say the fake news mainstream media was the enemy of the people? They just, oh my God, they couldn't believe that he would say that. How can this man say that about an entire industry? That is an attack on the First Amendment. Well, first of all, he didn't say the media is the enemy of the people. Of course, he said it about the partisan hacks, and we all know exactly who they are. And second... It really seems every day he was proven right about that over and over and over again. You know, the Associated Press just over the weekend published several stories about 22-year-old University of Georgia nursing student Lakin Riley, who was killed on campus while going for a morning jog. And this was just a really horrible tragic story. This young girl, she had so much going for her. She's bright. She's beautiful. You know, she's got this career ahead of her once she finishes nursing school, and her life was just completely cut short by a monster. Now, I want to give you the the details of this story by reading directly from the AP article, okay? A 26-year-old man was arrested Friday in the killing of a nursing student whose body was found on the University of Georgia campus, and police said he apparently did not know the victim. He acted alone, and there was no further threat to the university community. The suspect, identified as Athens resident Jose Antonio Ibarra, was taken into custody for the death of 22-year-old Lake and Hope Riley, police said. The body of Augusta University College of Nursing student was found near the running trails Thursday, launching a highly visible police investigation that centered on an apartment complex just south of there. Well, there's a little tidbit that you didn't hear in this AP story right here, and that is that this Athens resident, Jose Ibarra, is in fact an illegal immigrant here from Venezuela. You know, just a a minor detail. I'm sure that it was just, you know, an oversight, okay, just a little oopsie. Surely they wrote a follow-up that highlighted the glaring omission that this man should not have even been in this country in the first place. You have to imagine, surely, it's incompetence rather than a deliberate act of deception. This is, after all, the Associated Press. They've been around since like the 1800s. Established, well-reputable, Associated Press, the AP. Well, you tell me, if their motives were pure. They did write a follow-up on this story. It was titled, The Killing of a Nursing Student Out for a Run Highlights the Fears of Solo Female Athletes. And in this article, it discussed the dangers female runners face, perceived and real, and the hypervigilance women must take going out even for a run on campus. So that's the root cause of the problem. Toxic masculinity, right? Men who just can't control themselves. That's what's to blame here. Nothing else to see. In fact, the author of that disgusting piece of garbage, Janie Har, even used another anecdotal example in her writing to prove the horrific nature of toxic masculinity, these men who just can't control their urges. And she brought up the 2018 murder of University of Iowa student Molly Tibbetts to further prove her point. There's just one problem. Molly Tibbetts, uh, who was found like dismembered in a cornfield. It was just this horrible, gruesome, gruesome sight. Well, she was also murdered by an illegal immigrant. So two examples this author gives to try to prove the point that is toxic masculinity, except both examples that she tries to use to prove her point Both women were murdered by illegal immigrants, but that doesn't fit the narrative. That's not good for optics. It's really not good for optics. And you know what else isn't good for optics? You're going to be shocked to hear this, you guys. The man who just murdered Lake and Riley already had a criminal history here in this country. And I do mean after he entered the country illegally, because that is, of course, his first criminal history here in this country. So according to ICE, This monster crossed illegally into El Paso in September 2022 and was released into the United States via parole. I love how they call it parole. They're like, let's super duper pinky promise that you are going to show up to court. And they're like, wink, wink. Yes, I will. Well, let me see. 2032. Yep, I'll show up. So he's released right into the country. September 2022. Nearly a year later, 
In September 2023, New York police, NYPD, arrested him in New York City for acting in a manner to injure a child less than age 17. But NYPD released him once again right into the interior of the country before an ICE detainer could be issued. Wow. So turns out it's a sanctuary city for everyone but you, the law-abiding American citizen. But you didn't see any of those details in the Associated Press. And what a slap in the face to this poor girl and like her grieving family, reducing her senseless death to a mere footnote in the culture wars because you don't want to admit the actual problem, the actual glaring problem that is right in front of you. It's so easy. The problem is so easy. It's so easy to find out. Allowing completely unvetted strangers into the interior of the country, it turns out, is not a great policy. And recall that, as many have pointed out, St. George Floyd overdosed on drugs and received three funerals at a time, by the way, when you weren't even allowed to stay with your dying relatives in a hospital. You were not allowed to come visit your relatives in a hospital. You couldn't do that because everyone was on lockdown. But George Floyd got three funerals a statue, and millions of dollars for his family. Lake and Riley was murdered by an illegal. Joe Biden's got nothing to say. There's been very little media coverage and zero dollars compensation for her family, which I would say uh, it's Joe Biden. The blood is on his hands. He owes her family quite a bit of compensation. But, you know, it's not just the press who does this, perpetuates the lies and the falsehoods to run cover for their agenda because of the optics. It's, of course, the lawmakers themselves. And uh, our very own favorite, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a woman who represents a district in New York, of all places, a place that has seen their state decimated by illegals, actually had the audacity to go on NBC, MSNBC, I should say, over the weekend and say that the border crisis is just the false narrative. Watch. There is not only no moral calculation, there is no economic calculation, there is no logical calculation, there is only a political calculation. And that political calculation is we are going to keep whining about it. Mm -hmm. We are going to keep pretending this is a crisis while contributing to actual problems. And then we're going to block the solution so that we can campaign on it over and over and over. And we can call it caravans. We can call it migrant crises. We can call it family separation. And they will just recycle it over and over and over again in order to gin up, you know, just so much animosity and destruction in this country and racism in this country, because that's the only thing that the Republican Party even is standing on. I did hear her tell on herself again. There, there is no moral calculation, no economic calculation, no calculation whatsoever. It is purely a political calculation. Yes, that's you. There is no moral calculation for what you guys are doing to this country, the devastation that you are wreaking upon this country because of your stupid political calculation. The economic, there I can guarantee you, There's no economic calculation for the types of, I mean, the billions and billions of dollars that we are going to be forced to spend on these people, that we are currently spending on these people with absolutely no way out. And by the way, she went on in that interview to talk about, well, the Republicans reject all of these, all of these solutions like a path to citizenship and and work papers and partnerships with businesses who need employees. No, no, just no, no path to citizenship, no work papers, no compromise. And I just want you, if you will, juxtapose what you just heard from radical left darling AOC, not addressing the problem at all, trying to tell you, you look, the problem is you because there's no problem at all, according to anyone else. OK, you, you, your lying eyes deceive you. There's no problem. It's just a false narrative that the Republicans are ginning up to create, you know, some sort of a uh, anger within their base. It's just, and look, all of those people flooding through the borders. Those, that's just those are just deep fake videos, I guess. That, that isn't actually happening. The Border Patrol fist bumping all of these illegals as they're working their way into the interior of the country. That's that's just that's that's Gemini, uh, Google Gemini. That's just AI. Don't worry about that. So juxtapose that type of rhetoric. OK, the, there's no problem. There's no problem at all. What problem? What are you talking about? What problem? I don't see a problem to Donald Trump 
over the weekend at CPAC. Watch. And they do come from prisons and mental institutions, and they are terrorists. And we're going to be paying a price, and it will be the largest deportation in the history of our country. And we have no, we have no choice. And it's not a nice thing to say, and I hate to say it. And those clowns in the media will say, oh, he's so mean. He said, no, no, they're killing our people. They're killing our country. They're killing our people. We have no choice. No compromise. No path to citizenship. No work papers. That, that's the plan guys, right? That was the plan. If we allow that to happen, we are falling into their trap. That was the plan. Let these people in, okay? Let them stay here for a few years. And then you're the bad guy for saying, but they've just built this life here. They have a family here now. They have friends here. They have roots here now. And you can't just rip that from them and send them back to this country that they no longer identify with. No, that is absolutely the plan here. No path to citizenship. No. Mass deportation is the only answer. And for all of Donald Trump's flaws, I know, I know there are some of you who say, well, he talked about deporting people the first time around and he didn't actually uh, deport as many people. Well, first of all, don't hold it against him that there were far less people trying to come into the country because of his rhetoric, because of his tough talk. It turns out that deters people from even bothering to make the dangerous journey. But number two, we're living in a completely different time. I mean, Joe Biden has doubled the amount of illegal immigrants in the country almost as compared to what it was before he arrived at the helm of things. So I would argue (laughs) now's the time that Donald Trump sees that he really has to spring into action. I do not believe that this is just rhetoric. I believe that he understands because he was so tough on his rhetoric, because he wanted to build the wall, the foundation for already understanding that this is a problem was there already. To see the devastation that the Biden administration has caused in just three short years, Donald Trump And by the way, Stephen Miller has already said mass deportations begin at noon on Inauguration Day. And I would say, I mean, (laughs) not soon enough. But if it if I have to wait till Inauguration Day on noon, fine. But I'm not waiting any longer than that. If you like this clip and you want to see the full episode, click here. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, come on, you know you do. Click here.